right now on Upfront. Abortion before the courts. Three Trump appointed judges have basically threatened the availability of a safe drug. The U.S. Supreme Court's new action on the abortion pill Mifepristone as Wisconsin's abortion lawsuit heads to court in just days. Our guest this Sunday, Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call, suing to overturn the state's 1849 ban. Then showdown in Washington. President Biden and Senator Schumer have no right to play politics. The House poised to vote this week on the House GOP bill to raise the debt ceiling. Wisconsin Congressman Scott Fitzgerald joining us from Washington as the political standoff with the Manhattan District Attorney intensifies. And port profits, Milwaukee's port cruising to a record year. New Great Lakes cruises, post-pandemic business, and the growing statewide impact. We're one-on-one -on -one with the new port director, Jackie Carter. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director, Matt Smith. Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us. The new action this week from the U.S. Supreme Court, not the end. It is the most important abortion-related case justices have weighed in on since the high court overturned Roe v. Wade. Now, just more than a week until arguments in Wisconsin that will determine the fate of the state's 1849 abortion ban. Attorney General Josh Call was one of two dozen Democratic attorneys general who signed on to a brief challenging that initial Texas decision. He joins us now. Attorney General, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, let's talk broadly, more legal action is expected surrounding this case. Are we at a point where strictly the courts, either at the federal or state level, are going to decide abortion policy? Well, I hope not. You know, the Supreme Court in its Dobbs decision when it overturned Roe versus Wade, which I believe was a, a grave mistake, but when it said that, uh, it said that this issue is going back to the states, and that's being tested right now through the challenge to the, the use of mifepristone. Um, you know, if, if this is really about leaving the decision to the states, the Supreme Court shouldn't step in. Now, as this case works its way through the court system, we'll see if the Supreme Court's going to stand by that. In less than two weeks, arguments are going to start in Dane County over Wisconsin's uh, 1849 abortion ban. Uh, you and Governor Evers are challenging the legality and the enforceability uh, of, that, of that ban. Uh, what is the Department of Justice argument, and how is the DOJ preparing right now? We've made a few arguments, but our key argument is that there were a series of laws that were passed following Roe versus Wade that regulate legal abortion, and that those laws are inherently in conflict with the 1849 ban, which is a sweeping ban with very limited exceptions. Uh, we've argued that those recent laws impliedly repealed the 1849 ban. We've got really strong arguments, um, but ultimately we're going to keep fighting to restore access to safe and legal abortion in Wisconsin. The, this 1849 ban's impact on the rights of women in Wisconsin has been severe, uh, and we need to change course and restore access to safe and legal abortion. What type of preparation is going in in these final days before the first hearing? Uh, we are uh, preparing. We, we've got uh, our attorney who will be arguing the case is uh, going to be reviewing the materials and uh, having a moot court, that kind of things we normally do. But we've got really strong legal arguments, and I feel confident that ultimately we will see the 1849 ban found not to be enforceable. One argument you, you've made is you cited this 1985 law saying it supersedes the 1849 ban. The law legalizes abortion before the point of viability. I want you to listen to something former Governor Scott Walker told us recently, uh, something he said about what he sees could happen, including legislation he signed as governor. Take a listen. The court may very well throw out the original law, but keep the one I signed. If that's the case, that effectively, at least politically, probably wipes that issue right off, uh, off the political landscape come the 2024 election. Do you buy that argument from the Attorney General and Governor Evers that the 1849 law is unenforceable because of future laws? Well, I'm not a lawyer. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a, uh, legally it's a tough choice one way or the other. There's a law there when we passed this other law, we didn't repeal it because at that point it was unenforceable under uh, the federal uh, Supreme Court ruling. But one way or the other, the irony is if you looked at the ads, though, you thought it was going to be abortion on demand the way it was pre the Dobbs decision. But that's probably from a legal standpoint point, not the case. It'll be one or the other. If they go back, if the court rules that the original law is not valid, but the 20 weeks uh, is, well, again, that's an issue that I think has much broader support politically uh, across the spectrum and probably neutralizes that issue in the 2024 election, at least here in Wisconsin. So is that a scenario where we could be with a bill that former Governor Walker signed a ban on abortion after 20 weeks? Well, I agree with the governor that if we win our challenge, uh, we will basically be back to where we were prior to the Dobbs decision, because what we've argued is that that 1849 ban is unenforceable. That would essentially return us to the status quo when Roe v. Wade was in place. The big difference, though, is that 
abortion is going to be uh, remain a critical issue in the state of Wisconsin because we don't have Roe anymore. So that means that uh, a legislature could come in and pass a bill that that could change the abortion landscape. Uh, you know, if that were to be signed by a governor, uh, there could be new restrictions. We've certainly seen that in a lot of states around the country. So it, this is going to remain an issue. But if we win, it, it is correct that we'll go back to a position that's similar to where we were before the Dobbs decision. It's likely that this case, obviously we know this is going to make it to the state Supreme Court. Do you see that happening? Any chance of that happening before Janet Protosiewicz is sworn in uh, officially later this summer? Well, it remains to be seen what the timeline is. The argument that's going to happen in Dane County Circuit Court is, is next month in May. Uh, and so, you know, the, the court, I'm sure, will take some time to evaluate the arguments uh, that have been raised and ultimately issue a decision. Uh, it's possible that that decision will then make its way up to the Supreme Court. Uh, but what that timeline is is going to depend on some factors that we just can't know the answer to, including um, what amount of time the judge uses to, to decide the arguments that are currently pending before the court. If this case does drag on well into or even past the 2024 election, is this politically beneficial for Democrats? Well, first, I'm very hopeful that the case will not drag on that long. You know, the, the arguments are before the, the judge right now. We're, we're about to have the hearing. Um, so I expect that this could make its way up to the, the state Supreme Court even this year. Um, so I think we, we will have a decision well before 2024. But I think there's no question, if you look at recent elections, that Wisconsinites overwhelmingly support restoring access to safe and legal abortion. But you know, to follow up on something that Governor Walker just said, Republicans need to be clear about where they stand on this issue, because in every election going forward, voters are going to be voting in part on what they want the policy in the state to be, because the governor and the legislature uh, even if we win this case, are going to have the ability to decide what that policy is due to the Supreme Court having repealed Roe v. Wade. We're approaching the two-year mark of the DOJ's investigation into uh, the clergy abuse. Uh, the most recent high-profile charge coming just this past week, former Cardinal Theodore uh, McCarrick charged with sexual assault of a minor. How did those charges come about? Uh, we have asked survivors or anybody who has information about clergy and faith leader abuse to report to the Department of Justice. And, and over 200 people have now submitted completed reports. Every one of those reports that's made, we follow up on. We have a multidisciplinary team uh, that involves a prosecutor, an investigator, and a victim advocate. They review the, the reports that have come in, and then they figure out what the appropriate follow-up is. And in some cases, cases are beyond the statute of limitations, and so that means there's not a criminal investigation that would happen. But in this case, uh, there was follow-up that could happen. Um, uh, that information was ultimately referred to the district attorney, and he decided to file the, the charge that was filed. What's going to happen with this case? Are we going to see the former cardinal in Wisconsin? There's a Massachusetts case uh, underway involving him as well right now. It's pending right now. Uh, so what happens next will depend in part on how the defense responds. Uh, my understanding is that there's uh, been an argument raised in Massachusetts that uh, he's not able to stand for trial. We'll see what arguments are made here. Um, but because the, the case was recently filed, those sorts of motions haven't yet gone before the court. And uh, you know what, what will happen will depend in part on what approach the defense takes. Attorney General Josh Colick, always we appreciate your time and perspective. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Here. Up next, a critical week ahead in Washington. Debt ceiling negotiations intensifying. New votes this week. Congressman Scott Fitzgerald standing by next.